Hey, how are you? I'm Jay, and if, if you're a fan of the original Doug Ritter Griptilian, or maybe you missed out on it, this is your chance, so stick around. And this is the Hogue manufactured Doug Ritter RSK MK1-2. And as usual, we'll go ahead and get into what I like about it, what I don't, and some of the potential deal breakers. But right now you should be looking at some specs. Those interested, don't worry. I will also include them down in the description below, just in case if you wanna follow along through the review. But let's take care of those size comparisons right now. Let's go ahead and start uh, this section out with the obvious choice. And this is the original Doug Ritter Griptilian from Benchmade. How about another Benchmade with a, with a blade shape that really, really resembles the uh, Hulk version. And this is the Freak in the M4 blade. And this is another uh, Hogue manufactured knife. This is the EX-03. How about the uh, Spyderco Manix 2? Then we'll go ahead and wrap up this section with the full-size Sabenza 21. Now, those of you that are kind of running really short on time, let me just go ahead and tell you this. The RSK MK1-G2 is a very solid, harder-use uh, type of knife. Excellent value that I am just, I'm head over heels for this thing. But you want to find out some more, you got to stick around. What first really uh, caught my attention and just, just really drew me to this knife is 100% is going to be this blade. Absolutely love the this wide profile, 1.25 inches, and that's going to be from the spine to the sharpened edge. This was when I first began started collecting knives, so let's say uh, five years ago or so. And I, I, I had watched, I'd been watching YouTube videos like crazy um, just to try and go ahead and, and to find out what, what knives I should initially be buying to begin my collection. One of them, as I saw, was the Griptilian. So I was on a quest, I need to get a Benchmade Griptilian. So I had watched quite a few videos that were comparing the, this Griptilian to that that standard uh, Osborne blade shape Griptilian, which to be honest, I'm not really the biggest fan of. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to get this Ritter blade shape and this is going to be my Griptilian in my collection. So what did I do? I just went over to Knifeworks, paid the, I think it might have been 140 bucks at the time. And, you know, it was, it was shipped to me a couple days later. Really, it was a matter of now that I'm finding out, just I was in the right place at the right time. This one does feature, it features the very same blade steel as the Generation 1 version, being the M390. And it is, it's classified as a very, they call it a high cord uh, flat grind. The finish is just, a, it's a really grainy stone wash. So I don't know how well that's coming across here through my camera, but it's really, it's for those of you that have the Sabenza 21 and you know this stone wash finish, the one on the Hogue is, is the exact opposite of the finish here. This knife is just, it's a perfect example of how to do a sharpening choil right. Look at that. Now the action here, right out of the box, was absolutely fantastic. And you can see, you can deploy the blade with either the ambidextrous thumb studs or by just uh, pulling back on the able lock studs. Yes, just like a Benchmade, but we're gonna talk more about the able lock here in a couple seconds. The thumb studs are, they're, it's nice to see that they're, they're really easy to get at. And they're both on either side, the same distance away from the scale. So that's nice to see. Now the nature of this lock, it allows for just a very quiet, I mean very quiet, drop shut action. Did you hear that? Let me get that a little bit closer to the microphone and listen. 
Wow. It's like it has a silencer on it. And now a ball bearing pivot to achieve this action, ball bearing pivot here is just not necessary. So I really do like, I like the easy to maintain bronze washers that they used here. Good choice. Since this blade, it's, it's only retained just by the Omega Springs. So, you know what that means? Oh yeah, yeah, you can very, very easily uh, shake it open. The Able Lock, uh, spelled just A-B-L-E. Now that stands for, uh, it's ambidextrous bar lock enhanced. Now moving on down to the to the handle, which feature the, the scales, they're just gonna be, it's, well, two very thick slabs of just uh, a solid, G10 and they are very very comfortable and there's two reasons for that one if you go ahead I want to show you if you can stare down kind of stare down the sights there yeah can you see that yes they are uh, in fact contoured and there are no sharp edges anywhere on this handle so just super comfortable on the scales here the the traction is it's provided by a very effective can you see this it's kind of like a i'm going to call it like a sunburst uh, pattern that is actually machined into the g10 and you can see it all kind of flares out from that from that pivot screw there are also there's going to be three areas of jimping one on the let's see on the blade spine Yep, right there for the uh, thumb ramp. And then there's going to be two on the spine of the handle. Again, right there by the pivot and then down towards the pummel. Now I have a medium sized hand and if you can see here that there's definitely there is uh, there's there's plenty of room for all of my fingers and there's even just a little bit of room to uh, to spare as well. So if some of you that might have you know larger hands than I, you should have no trouble here. Now I want to talk about this in the pocket for a few minutes, and you can see this does feature. It's a it's a deep carry clip that's going to be just uh, tip up only, but it's for righties, and yes, sir, they do have it for lefties as well. And now this pocket clip is attached. Can you see it's attached with uh, two screws, even though underneath, so if we remove the clip, and I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over, you can see it, it features a, a three-hole pattern, which by the way, yes, those are actually brass inserts in those screw holes. The three-hole pattern, which is very similar to Hogue's very own EX3. Now, this was done, supposedly, to, to be able to accommodate, uh, you know, a, a different, a wide variety of aftermarket uh, and custom pocket clips. But I found this kind of interesting because it, it's made for other, for, to, to fit many other clips. However, Hogue's very own standard clip that comes on the EX3 does not fit this handle now you're probably wondering okay jay well how does that 3.2 millimeter blade stock thickness that is you know flat ground how does it cut well let's see oh yeah wow i'd say she does very well now, before I go ahead and toss this up on the scale, I just want to go ahead and show you that it does have its uh, three-pillar open construction, which is always nice because it's just uh, it's easier to clean without having to totally, completely disassemble the knife. And on the inside, there, nope, there's there's no skeletonization uh, of any kind in an effort to reduce the weight. So let's see how that affects our knife. Okay, that's not bad, 4.6 uh, ounces. I mean, I wouldn't call that light, but I definitely would not say that that's too heavy. Let's see, that's probably gonna be, uh, it's pretty close to the equivalent of one, two, three, four, five. It looks like five AA batteries or the combined weight of the Benchmade Bugout 
almost exactly the same as uh, the Benchmade bug out and combined weight of the 940. Now, before we go ahead and get to the, the price and the potential deal breakers, of course, I do have a question for you. And all I would like to know is just that, do you own any retailer exclusive knives? And if, if you do, which ones? Uh, and you can just let me know down in the comments section below. Hey, I just want to quickly remind you to go ahead. Do you see that subscribe button? Yeah, that one, click on it. Because if you do, you will get knife reviews that get right to the point. And come on, who doesn't want that? Potential deal breaker number one is regarding its this knife's availability. And now you can only get this from, from KnifeWorks. And don't worry, I will include the link down in the description below as well. And you can only get this from KnifeWorks. And it's it's kind of like if you've ever purchased a knife from, from Mastrop. And you know that you know certain mass drop knives are not always available. You have to wait for the drop. Kind of the same thing here because it seems like that they're actually releasing these in 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 batches. So, unfortunately, if you went to the website right now, you will see that you can't just purchase it and it's going to be you know delivered in a couple days. You got to wait for the batch to be released so yes that kind of stinks and the next potential deal breaker is regarding the, the this this kind of broom handle of broomstick of a of a handle yeah it's 0 0.65 inch thickness now and i know some of you are going to consider that a, a, a little too thick and you know what that is it's understandable it, it really is and the next potential deal breaker is regarding the, the the lanyard hole. And yeah, if you look, you can see that lanyard hole does affect the positioning of the clip. And it also at the same time is increasing the length of the handle for the sake of that lanyard hole. And I, you know what, that just, that kind of bugs me sometimes. And the very last potential deal breaker, which to be honest, I can't, I, I don't even want to call it a deal breaker because it's, it's more of a nitpick and it's about the, the hardware screws. I really wish that these were black. They started good with the pivot. I mean, that's black, but then the rest, oh, this would look just so much sharper if they were just all, all had that black coating. So where does that go ahead and leave us here with the uh, Doug Ritter RSK MK1-G2? This, I feel, this is a knife, it's really meant, it's meant to be used. It's not to be displayed. It's not a safe queen. Again, for me. And it's because it's just, it's an incredible value. I mean, M390 steel, this thing should cost more. I hate to say it, but it... I have to admit it, this should cost a heck of a lot more than it does. How much does it cost? We almost forgot. $153. $153. Fantastic value. And, and not only that, the proceeds, okay, so when you buy one, the proceeds go ahead and they fund a guy, Doug Ritter, who challenges and he's fighting against irrational knife laws that that affect all of us so now is this i mean is this now my new number one favorite knife oh man is that gonna be tough to answer because currently it's the the viper fortis so let me leave you with this no no it is it's it's not my number one all-time favorite knife but it's in the top three.